Okay, hey everybody, Z back again, and I've got another video. So I'm going to be going over kind of touch controls for mobile devices. So yeah, recently I uh, got into kind of programming iOS apps. So I was like, uh, may as well, may as well go over some uh, some touch controls on the channel. So I've already uh, got my setup here. So we've got um some sprites. Got 64 by 64 circle and another one 24 by 24 oh 36 that's embarrassing all right cool so you'll notice that we've got um all of the like origin points for each sprite is zero and zero so you just want to keep it like that that's just how i program things you if you prefer to put it in the center that's cool too so next up, uh, I have some scripts here. I've got some scripts for just kind of setting the height, the room height and width for a uh, iOS device. I haven't done any other types of devices yet. I'm not going to go into any anything that deep in a tutorial like this because um, there's a lot of a lot of ways to get your screen to the right size. I'm um, I'm going to be looking at surface drawing to a surface and then resizing it soon but i haven't actually looked into that yet so that'll be interesting uh next is uh, this thing i'll explain it later it's not really important right now uh that's just some code that i reuse a couple of times uh so yeah i have actually planned this tutorial i'm not going to go into it blind uh right next we got the screen size this is just running the script and then in it's running the script in this room and then it will just go straight to this room. So that's just going to set our, our size. Uh, next up, oh, I'll just say the width and the height are f made for an iPhone 4S or lower. Um, I will be recording on my iPhone 5, so I'm going to be uh, doing the end example on an iPhone 4S. Um, next up, the character object we have. The variables are already set up so we've got a direction variable this is just going to tell us if it's up if it's going up left bottom or right uh, and each number is worth something so that's all that's all fine that's pretty simple stuff um, when on the create event the character is going to start moving upwards that's just to get things moving get things into motion got some particles there not going to show them off uh, particles again here we have um some movement stuff. I've just gone through all of the movement, like the basic movement stuff, like checking a direction and then moving in that direction. Um, and I've just done that uh, before the video to kind of keep things nice and quick. Uh, next up, I have the tap control object. This is where we're going to be doing all of the uh, program, like the tap touch controls and everything. Uh, and obviously the control object, that's just going to be controlling a couple of other things. So I think how we'll start is we'll start with this one. Uh, first up, we're just going to create a global left mouse event. Um, that will be a that one. All right. So the code we want to use here is if instance exists. Sorry if I talk to myself under my breath. Just kind of helps me remember it. Oh, what am I doing? Sorry, I'm just trying to make my programming neater recently after I got yelled at. <laughs> no, just kidding. All right, next up, instance create. Oh. So what we're doing here is we're just going to be creating uh, the OTAP control instance at the mouse X and mouse Y. And what this is going to do is this is just going to create the object right where we click. That's per that's just perfect. And oh, also, instance exists. The exclamation mark creates a not like event thing function. A not function, uh, that's a good way of putting it. Anyway, what it does is it basically makes this event or function uh, do the opposite of what it normally does. So in, if the instance 
OTAP control doesn't exist, then we want to create one. Pretty simple stuff. Next up, uh, we want to put the O control object onto the room. Don't want to forget that. Important, important stuff. And we're going to jump to the OTAP control. So first of all, we'll start off with the create event. Create event's pretty simple. It just creates, uh, for the noobs, uh, it just creates, it just runs the code on when the object is created. And it's usually the first, there are some, I believe there's one or two exceptions, but usually it's the first event to be run on an object in a room. So even, I think it's even before game start or room start, one of those. Anyway, um, angle, we're going to have an angle. This is just, uh, this angle variable will just report something, uh, the uh, angle between the OTAP control object and the o oh, and the original point. It's hard to explain, I'll explain it later. But essentially, this is just going to report and an, a variable to the character object. All right, cool. Next up, uh, we're also going to be using an alarm. Um, and it, we're going to set it to two steps. So every two steps, we want this alarm to sound. And speaking of the alarm, we want to make an alarm. First alarm will be this one. And all this one is going to do is run our script for script check direction. And we also want to repeat the alarm. And that's all good. Now I'll explain this script to check direction now. Uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to set, we're going to say if the point, if the point direction, so what this function does is it checks between two points and finds out the angle essentially. Um, so x start is a variable that x start and y start are, are basically just uh, store the original um, point uh, at which the object was created. So when we click anywhere on the screen, that O control object will create create a uh, O tap control object, and the O tap control object will store this these two uh, variables. Next up, we've got the X and Y, and all that's going to do is measure the angle between our um, how oh, is it called? The start position and the x y position. So that's pretty easy. And we just want to say if the point is more than forty five degrees. So yeah, uh, if it's more than forty five degrees and it's less than one hundred and thirty five degrees, we want to set the character's direction variable to zero. So that essentially means that if um, actually I might draw it real quick. So, if we look at a just a really small, simple circle here, the that script, that first one I just read, is going to create a is going to check the angle, and it's going to check the angle between this line here and this line here. And then if it's anywhere between these two, then it's going to send the character upwards. And it's the exact same code with each and every other one. So if I go back to that script there, you can see it's checking between 135, so more than 135, and less than 225. And then we've also got more than 225, less than 315, and then more than 315 and less than 45. Uh, just be careful with this. Don't, I remember the, f oh, the first time I did it, it was a while ago now, but I made a mistake. Oh, I can't remember exactly what it was, but I think it was, I think what I did was I did zero instead of 45 degrees. I don't know what I was thinking, but it took me like an hour to figure out what I'd done. I couldn't figure it out. Anyway, that's, Really, really simple if you think about it. Um, so it's just checking an angle, a couple of angles <laughs> anyway. 
so that's what that's doing. Every two steps, it's going to check the angle and then it's going to report the angle or the direction back to the O character and change the direction it's going with that step event. So we can see in the step event, if the direction changes, then you're all set to move a different direction. Um, just f as a note, the step event uh, creates, it's basically happens constantly. It always, it's always running. It's always running these codes. Um, next up, we want to go to the, uh, I think we'll start, yeah, we'll go to the step event on this object. So this one is a little bit more code. So we're going to go with x equals, oh, not good, x equals mouse x. So that's just uh, setting the object to the, oh, this kind of probably confused someone if, they're paying proper attention up here, but yeah, um, this will set the object to the mouse's position. So wherever the mouse, in this case, will be a finger tapping somewhere, wherever that is, it's going to set the OTAP control object to that position. Next up, we're going to check, actually, oh yeah, point, why do I even have this? What code do I need to do here? Sorry, I'm just getting a bit confused with myself. Uh, I think I'm okay. All right, so next we're just going to do mouse check button MB left. All right, so what this is going to do is, this is just going to check if the mouse button, the second, sorry, the left mouse button, in this case, obviously the finger, will isn't down. If it's not being pressed, then we want to run this script. So script check direction. Now what, why I've got this code here uh, is because with that other code, it only runs every two steps, which is uh, re relatively fast, but it's not perfect. It, it's really not going to matter. You can actually increase the steps on this if you'd like, just to limit the amount of times that script is run per second. But um, otherwise, yeah, you're good to go with uh, just putting it here. Because what this will do is when you take your finger off the screen, it's just going to run the code and destroy the uh, tap control object. And that just gets rid of the tap control but it also makes sure that everything's accurate and precise. Anyway, so that's everything nice and easy. It makes it a lot easier that we have it in a script so we don't have to write it over and over again. Um, so yeah, that's all of that done, actually. That was pretty quick. Uh, next up, we want to do the draw event. So the draw event, really simple. We're just going to draw ourselves. So draw self. Now, draw set color white. Oh, yeah, sorry, I'm <laughs> reciting all the code to myself. It just helps when I'm recording. Not sure why. Uh, now, there's one more thing I like to do. This is just done for debugging purposes to make sure everything's working properly. So I'm going to draw a line and I'm going to have it draw from the X start and the Y start to the X and Y code. And all that does is it just shows us that the object, this object, the OTAP control object is mo is kind of accurately measuring angle and shit. Uh, <laughs> anyway, that's pretty simple. All self-explanatory. Draw self, draws that sprite there and any other things I might happen to have. Uh, draw set color is C white. That just sets the color of the line to white. And yeah, um, I don't actually think I need this angle code anymore. I think I had it there for another reason. Anyway, we may as well give it a test. I think that's pretty much everything. All right, see how that goes. And I'll just do it on the iPhone in a sec to make sure everything works. Oh. Bollocks.
All right, so what we can see there is I'm holding the uh, thing down. I'm just going to move um, this one. <laughs> that should make it look a little bit nicer. <laughs> all right, cool. So that's all that's going to, what you can see there is it's updating every two steps every time I move this around. So if I go, do, 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 do. yeah, so that's all set. Now it's, um, that's everything I think. So what I'll do now is I'll boot up my, I'll, I'll just load it onto my iPhone and I'll record it and just give you guys an example. I hope this is, this tutorial has helped. Um, it's been, it's definitely, it's good. It's good. Definitely a very useful thing to learn. All right, I'll be right back. Okay, so we are back. And I've got my um, mum's iPhone ready to go. Um, already tested it to make sure it's going to run the game. Had some trouble with the Yogscast game earlier where um, we uh, couldn't run it because it took too much RAM in multiplayer. But that's all cool. All sorted. Now um, I'll just try and uh, kind of demonstrate this the best I can. <laughs> so I'm going to open her up, it's going to almost load instantly, and there you go. So you can see the touch controls. You can make all of that invisible, the OTAP control object, so that can be invisible. And obviously you don't need that um, piece of script that, oh sorry, piece of code that updates some um, on the alarm, so you don't need to have the alarm there. The alarm will make it do that, so you can hold down and then move it around. Now that's kind of for a controller, but if you just want swiping, then you're gonna wanna either, you probably want the alarm one, that alarm, except you just wanna remove that alarm, uh, you wanna remove the refresh, so at the end of the code for the alarm you want to get rid of keep everything else the script um the script and everything just get rid of alarm zero equals two but yeah obviously that is looking pretty awesome i'm trying oh yeah all right so that should be that should be good. Okay. Have a good one. Have a good one.